so what's up guys today we're diving into the newly released expo sdk 53 the latest update for building mobile apps with expo whether you're just starting out or curious about what's new in this release this video will walk you through the major updates explain any technical terms and help you understand what it means for your app no tech jargons just simple now we on this channel just released some updates to help you build your apps better fix your bugs and get so much support as a react native developer we have created the millionaire dev level community for you to join and enjoy different benefits so that you won't be stuck when building your app and you also get to build more apps in less time thereby making you become a millionaire dev so join our community now to get this experience subscribe to our channel if you are new here leave a like and send a super thanks each time we help you gain more knowledge so let's dive into the video of today which is the newly released expo sdk 53. so what's new in sdk 53 first up Expo SDK 53 includes the latest versions of React Native and React, which is React Native 0.79.0 and React 19.0.0. This means better performance, new features, and more stability for your apps. And the new architecture is now turned on by default for all new projects. Think of it more as an efficient engine under the hood of your app, making things run smoother and faster. Though, if you're not ready for this change, you can still opt out, but it's recommended to embrace the new setup. Android apps now support edge-to-edge -edge displays by default. This means your Android app will now automatically use the entire screen space, including the areas behind the status bar at the top and the navigation bar at the bottom, providing a more immersive experience. It's especially important as future Android versions will require this update. Expo is experimenting with a new library called Expo UI. It aims to provide developers with native UI components from Jetpack Compose and Swift UI making it easier to build beautiful interfaces that feel right at home on both Android and iOS. Great news for iOS developers, you can now deploy development builds directly on TestFlight, unlike before when TestFlight was traditionally used only for production or pre-release builds. This simplified the testing process of your app. Now, these changes that we just spoke about are the major changes that we have in the SDK 53. Though there are some other changes that are just updates and improvements to features in pre-existing SDK release. Things like improved Android build times with pre-built Expo modules, React server functions support now in beta, improvements on background tasks, improvement for Expo modules for TV and Mac OS, and improvements in Expo notifications. The SDK 53 update also brings some deprecations and breaking changes. Some other modules are being phased out in SDK 53. For example, Expo Barcode Scanner and Expo Face Detector are deprecated. It's recommended to use Expo Camera and React Native Vision Camera instead. The Expo SQLite model has been updated to a more modern API. If you are using the older version, you need to adjust your code to align to the new structure. In Expo for Web, the Get Permissions Async function no longer asks users for permission directly. Instead, it simply checks the current permission status like Granted, Denied, or Prompt by using the browser's built-in permissions API. What is Get Permissions Async used for? It's used to check if your app already has permissions to do things like use the camera, microphone, or location without actually triggering a permission prompt. But why the change? On the web, only the browser itself should show permission prompts. This change makes Expo behave more like a typical web app and avoids unexpected permission requests. This is majorly for the web. So what does this all mean for me as a developer. With the new architecture enabled by default, your apps will benefit from improved performance and future proofing. It's a good idea to test your app thoroughly to ensure everything works smoothly. Also, if you're using any deprecated modules, now is the right time to update them, as this will help keep your app up to date and compatible with the latest features. With edge to edge displays becoming the norm, make sure your app's layout look good on devices that utilize this feature. Test on different screen sizes to ensure a consistent user's experience. Expo SDK 53 has big updates that make building your app easier and help them run better. If you keep your app up to date, your app will stay fast and work well with the latest tools. So that's it from this video. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe and expect me to drop new and interesting content to make your experience with building apps easier. Also, leave a super thanks and join our community to enable me to reach out better to you and help you build better apps. Stay blessed.